Tonight, a new account of the government's response to September 11th points to a picture of ineptitude, confusion, and perhaps deception. A top Democrat and Republican suggest Americans still don't know the full truth about that day. We'll have that special report. Also tonight, two Texas Border Patrol agents are facing 20 years in prison, but the drug smuggler they pursued, given immunity by federal prosecutors, what in the world is going on in this country? We'll have that special report for you tonight. We'll have the answer. Tonight, we're one month away from the fifth anniversary of September 11th. A shocking new book by the 9-11 Commission co-chairman Thomas Kane and Lee Hamilton says Americans still don't know the whole truth about their government's initial response to those terrorist attacks that day. Christine Romans has the report. <laughs> Two hours of chaos and confusion on September 11th, and months of government ineptitude and incorrect testimony. A new book by 9-11 Commission co-chairman Tom Kane and Lee Hamilton outlines repeated misstatements by the Pentagon and Federal Aviation Administration. They write, fog of war could explain why some people were confused on the day of 9-11, but it could not explain why all of the after-action reports, accident investigations, and public testimony by FAA and NORAD officials advanced an account of 9-11 that was untrue. Untrue, the military's original timeline of United Flight 93. The military said FAA notified NORAD of a hijacked plane at 9.16 a.m. 47 minutes before the plane crashed in Pennsylvania. In fact, the military found out three minutes after the plane crashed. And equally untrue, the government's timeline for American Flight 77 and details about fighter jets scrambled to intercept it. The book also alleges government officials weren't forthcoming with the investigation, and it took interviews and subpoenas to shake loose valuable information. A Pentagon audit declassified last year found DOD did not accurately report to the 9-11 Commission on the response to the September 11, 2001 hijackings. Pentagon investigators blamed, quote, insufficient forensic capabilities, and worse, admits, quote, DOD might not be able to sufficiently capture and report on actions taken in response to a future significant air event. Still, so far, government investigators stopped short of calling all these inaccuracies lies. Investigations are underway by the Inspectors General of the Pentagon and the Department of Transportation to find out just why the FAA and NORAD didn't tell the truth. Now, Kane and Hamilton say all the inaccuracies have fueled conspiracy theorists, they've stymied the investigation, and, Lou, damaged the credibility of this government. Well, this government doesn't deserve much credibility, does it? Uh, in, in point of fact, if all of the after-action reports are untrue, uh, for whatever reason, that's a lie because they are asserted as the truth by people who knew better or should have. And really troubling, the Department of Defense own Inspector General report that was declassified showed that if the same thing happened again, you'd have the same chaos and the same misreporting or lies afterward. Incompetence and ineptitude on the part of this government on September 11th and in the weeks and months leading up to it uh, are established. The fact that the government would permit deception after a deception, whether honestly, if you can call it that, uh, uh, honestly intended uh, or not, but the fact that they would continue and perpetuate the lie it suggests that we need a full investigation of what is going on and what is demonstrably an incompetent and, at worst, deceitful federal government. Christine Romans, thank you very much. Incredible. President Bush today delivered what the White House termed a major speech about the, quote, nature of the enemy, end quote, in the war against radical Islamist terrorism. But five years, almost after September 11th, intelligence agencies still don't have a clear picture of al-Qaeda nor its operation. Now, the Department of Homeland Security has turned to psychologists, chemists, and all sorts of professionals and best-selling author Brad Meltzer to think out of the box about al-Qaeda's strategy and potential terrorist strikes against this, against this country. Brad Meltzer is the author of the new book, The Book of Fate. He also wrote The Tenth Justice, Dead Even, The First Council, The Millionaires, The Zero Game. Brad, I read every one of them. 
and uh, I'm delighted to have you with us here. Thank you, Lou. I appreciate now, it. I think a lot of people, including myself, are surprised to hear that the government has the intelligence, the sense to turn to creative artists like you and say, think about what in the world terrorists could do to this country and how they would do it. Were you shocked when they called you? Oh, when I got that phone call, that's the last phone call you ever think you're going to get. When I write these novels, I always try and find out about the White House, about, home, about Homeland Security, about the Capitol. But I get a phone call from the Department of Homeland Security that says to me, you know what, we'd love you to come in and brainstorm out of the box. And I said, my gosh, we must be in trouble if they need me. But the truth was, when I got there, it was reassuring because I want to know, when you look at terrorists today and you have a group of terrorists who can take a disposable camera and can take Gatorade and make a bomb out of it, you better believe we need people thinking right. outside that box. And that's exactly what yeah. we did. I have to say, it's one of the most reassuring things that I've heard when I mean, they brought you in because, I've, as I said, I've read your books and you have got uh, an intriguing uh, uh, mind for plots as well as uh, every other aspect of your craft. But the idea, that uh, the Red Cell program is what it's called, uh, why Red Cell? Well, the Red Cell is actually a name that has been used for years to do this kinds of brainstorming. And what it is, it's the Department of Homeland Security's way of trying to anticipate what the terrorists are going to do next. Now, they already have groups of people at the CIA, at the FBI, thinking right. these things. What they want is people who don't think the way the government usually thinks. My job as a novelist is to beat the news. Uh, if I don't beat the news, then I've written a book that's old. Right. And so they want people like me now, to do exactly that. And the truth is, you have done just that in, I believe, nearly every one of them. You have been ahead uh, by a couple of years, at least, in the, in the developments. Well, even in the newest book, in the Book of Fate, the villains right. in the book, there's a Secret Service agent working with a CIA guy, working with an FBI guy. And I gave the plot, and I said, you know what? Everyone talks about how great it is to let these organizations work together. I actually came in at opposite, and I thought, if they work together, then they're not checks and balances on each other. I gave the plot of the Book of Fate to the old former uh, head of the Secret Service, and right. he said to me, you're onto something here. This right. is going to be what the next threat is. Uh, well, at least uh, Brad Meltzer's done something uh, that the 9-11 Commission... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, worried about this as well. The, and I won't go into the politics of the thing. But when you're there brainstorming on this issue, Brad, uh, how many people are in the room with you? How many other creative, if, forgive the expression, creative types would be Yeah, there? well, what they do is they set us in a room. And, and the terrorists are doing very similar things. They just don't have wipe-off boards, and it's not in a boring building right. in Virginia. We'll sit there, and we'll have a CIA guy. We'll have an FBI guy. We'll have a chemist. We'll have a psychologist myself. And they'll say on one day maybe, we want you to take out this target. How would you do it? And we'll come up with the craziest thing you've ever right. heard. But when you look back on something, is it crazier than smashing airplanes into, twin, into the Twin Towers? Is it crazy? crazier than, than taking a, a bomb in the UK and trying to do it out of liquids. And it's amazing to me when we're done, I'll come up with the craziest idea you've ever heard. And then the Secret Service guy in the room will say, no, 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 here's how we one up it. And then the chemist will say, don't use that chemical, use this chemical. By the time we're done, we've created for the Department of Homeland Security, we've destroyed a major city in 10 minutes. And, it's, and you go home that night and that's, you are absolutely terrified because you realize how easy it is. Now, I said I was reassured to know that the, that the leadership at the Department of Homeland Security had the intelligence to bring you guys in. Are you reassured after going through the process, or are you more concerned? Well, I'm, I'm actually very reassured that they have this. I mean, listen, let's be honest. Do they really need a novelist to save the day? No, they don't. But you know what? I'm happy that they're thinking in every crazy way. Yeah. I want to sit at home and know they are thinking of every possible crazy MacGyver scheme that can be out there and that they're trying to take our reports when we're done and saying, how do we top that one? How do we stop that one? How do we stop this one? So I'm reassured by that. What I'm not reassured by is how simple it is to attack the country. And when you add just a little bit of brain to the mix, it is so simple that you wouldn't believe it. Well, Brad, I'm going to go back to the fact that you're involved in the process and a lot of other bright, uh, talented people, and I'm going to take the reassurance. We've got enough of the other to worry <laughs> I appreciate about. It. Thanks a lot for being here. The uh, new book is The Book of Fate. Uh, it comes out, uh, what, this week? Today. Right? It today is today. Is today. Right, yes, great. Well, Brad, all the best uh, with it. Uh, best selling author, Brad Meltzer. Good to have you here. Thank you, Lou.